No, I heard in that, you know the video on Soko, you said... Sorry? You know the video on Soko, you said that you were a lecturer. What? Yeah, I just retired. All right, okay. So yep, I'm, what, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a pensioner now. Right, so what, what subject did you lecture on? Business studies, economics and history. Those are my majors. Right. Okay. Because what? The last few years I've been teaching economics. Yeah, but do you, is it, was it at a college in London? Okay. I might do some freelance consultancy work for some colleges, especially if got exams to do. Yeah. Yeah, so that's no problem. But uh, I really just wanted to get away from college life. <laughs> the students we have these days, young people, they're so disruptive, even in college. Mm. Yeah, I'm not joking. Well, and some of my colleagues are also fed up as well. They would love to leave, but they can't because they're not a pension agent. Yeah. <laughs> so they're looking at me and say, oh, you're, you're going to retire, have a wonderful time. I said, yeah, I'm out of this mm. place. <laughs> But, but have you, I don't know if you thought of it, you know, you know Jay Smith? Yeah. Because when you look at him, you can tell he's, re he's obviously must be retired, you know, with how he looks. But what he does, he does online stuff. Well, Jay is not a, a college professor or such like I was. Mm. What he does is that he's a missionary from a Baptist a Methodist group in Pennsylvania. So they support him and do mission work. But when he was here in London for about 20, 30, 25 years, he enrolled at SOAS, mm. the School of Oriental African Studies, yeah, at the yeah. university. So while there, Professor Horting and one or two other professors who were secular people, not Christians, yeah. they were really digging <laughs> deep into the historical origins of Islam and yeah. the Quran. Yeah. So the materials they were doing was completely at odds with what we now call the standard Islamic narrative, yeah. right? And it's demolished the Muslims. Mm. So he would bring the materials to us. So we would put them out in the public domain yeah. for people to see and reflect on what we found. And it was all come from a university, which is excellent. So he got yeah, his yeah. degree and also the materials which we used to write books and pamphlets for people to look at. Mm. So some of the stuff we discovered was that, yes, there's more than one Arab Quran. Yeah, yeah. Like these, for example, in my poster. Well, well the, scholar, the Muslim scholars knew that from a thousand I years know. back anyway. So, so these, Johnny La these young Muslims, yeah. they don't like the material we're looking at because we're asking critical questions about history. Mm. Now, I'm a history major, not just economics. Yeah, yeah. So I look at research materials to find out what's really going on. Mm. So, the, so the tomato is excellent stuff. We loved it. So I wrote a book which was out of, it's out of publication now. So for 30 years, there's been more and more research materials coming up. Yeah. So much. You can write 10, 20 books now. But actually, <laughs> have you seen the latest book that he's talking about with Al-Fadi called the, um, what's it called? The, something, something to do with the, the creation of the Quran. Yeah. I think the title is a bit like that. But apparently there's some uh, a researcher is going into the the history yes uh to to because he's trying to find out who physically wrote it yeah or put it together yeah. because because you can see the writings come from different places yeah they do yeah but someone actually sat down and, and collected oh, it yeah. and decided which one <laughs> well the, the problem is that the quran has got multiple authors yeah over a period of at least 1000 years Mm. Muhammad never wrote it mm. because nobody can testify he did as an eyewitness. Yeah. Right? So everything that we're looking from historical point of view is, 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 is secondary sources. Yeah. When you look at all the hadiths, what period did they come from? The 200 years after Muhammad suppose is dead. But, but, but you know there's something worse 800, about... 800, so on, 805, whatever. Right? So that stuff is ancient. Mm. When we look at it, the, the, the historical materials for the New Testament, for example, we're looking at authors like Matthew Levi and Matthew's Gospel, mm. maximum AD 54. Because mm. they are manuscripts, I'm sure he was already writing. And people were copying Matthew and, and in sermons and everywhere, it was decimated in, in the first century. Mm. Uh, Paul comes along, becomes a follower of Christ, 
So he writes 14 books. Yeah. And all of them are written before AD 70. Mm. Right? General Titus, under Vespasian, comes along and destroys the city of Jerusalem and the temple. So there are no more records, but the New Testament is already all over the Middle East. Yeah, and, and so we've got multiple manuscripts. They are found in, Al in Africa, in Ethiopia, Cyrene, Egypt, Armenia, all the countries in the Middle East. Yeah. But the Quran you can't do that. They're but, missing all the gaps there. But, but actually, I was having a conversation with a, a Muslim in Croydon yesterday. And so we were talking about the crucifixion. Yeah. So so he said so he was saying to me that oh there weren't any witnesses to it. So so no no but but yeah, so, carry on. yeah so I said to him that um yeah there was so what I did is I go out Luke uh, I think it's Luke twenty Luke twenty six is it? You know at the end where on the MS Road. Yeah, in the Mayus Road, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and so so I said so I read it out to him where he actually said what the two men were saying. You know yeah. what they said to Jesus? Yeah. And they actually said that he was he was convicted by the um, the you know the convicted. Yeah, I look. yeah. And then he was crucified. So, yeah. so that's actually evidence. So they're saying that that happened. <laughs> because so, they were there and yeah. people were talking about it. Yeah. It was big news. And, and and here's what made it worse is that so he said to me, Okay, who's the eyewitness? Uh, Luke, was Luke an eyewitness? And so I said, he came afterwards, but then if you look at that, uh, actually, what you said, he's the name of one of the guys. Yeah. So I told him that, yes, we would, if, if we were to bring uh, a friend, a copy, then we would bring Luke into the court, and then he would go and get this guy. Yes. Saying, yeah. And bring him in. And bring him in. Yes. As, as, as an eyewitness. Yes. And what the hell? What do you think about it? Like, then you want to go to hell. hell. Yeah. Well, you can go further. Uh, a, a number of years ago, I was going to write a play of searching a, a, a courtroom, yeah. prosecution, defense, an eyewitness is tricked. Right. Right. So you have know, Peter. Yeah. Peter would say, right, Peter, what happened on the Mount of Olives? You cut the, the man's ear off? Mm. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Why do you do that? I was trying to defend Jesus. Mm. Jesus, what happened? Oh, I put that ear back on. Oh, Thomas, what happened after the eight days? All the apostles before you said they've seen Jesus back from the dead. You're the one that you're saying, I haven't seen him. I don't believe you. So on the eighth day, what happened? I did see him. Mm. And I confessed, my Lord and my God. Oh, so now you believe? Yes, because I saw you. He, Jesus actually said, touch me where they put the nails. Yeah. I didn't have to do them because I could say that, yeah, it's it for him. And what happened to Thomas? He died in India as a martyr. Mm. Oh, and you could trick in all the others. Paul, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, he says there are over 500 people yeah. that saw Jesus in one gathering. How many people are in Speaker's Corner right now? 200 at the most. They're not 500. But all these will be eyewitnesses. <laughs> now, but if one witness testifies for 10 minutes, how many minutes is that? Each one says, I saw Jesus, I saw Jesus. That's 500 times 10. 5,000 minutes. You will spend a whole week just examining the witnesses one by one. The court records, okay, John, you say he was there, Peter, Matthew, why you say it's God, mm. I etc., etc., etc. That's enough to bury you. Mm. Yeah. Full of witnesses. Yeah. Second, what happened to the stone at the tomb? Who, who took it away? The Romans did it. They were guarding it. Mm. <laughs> uh, where's the dead body? It's not in. Wait, what happened to the soldiers? They run to the Jewish high priest. Help, help. Now, why would Roman soldiers who were trying to kill the Jews go to the Jewish high priest and beg, please kill the governor? And he said, okay, we'll keep it quiet. Because <laughs> they were scared stiff. Mm. But how could you scare a Roman soldier on duty? True when the penalty for a Roman soldier was death straight away by his commander. And, and the, 
Sorry, oh no, no, just to say, and another thing is that, um, you know, the, this, this is one thing I, hate, I get from Muslims uh, uh, multiple times, is that, you know, when Jesus uh, died on the cross, they keep on saying that, oh, uh, where, who, you know, which, which apostle uh, or which disciple uh, like so knew that saw he or knew that he was dead. Yeah. But I just read and said no, it's a Roman soldier. The Roman soldier and, said and, it. And then what they say? And so then they say, oh, so you're saying? Well, I say to them, so you're saying that the Roman soldier, uh, uh, he made a mistake and uh, <laughs> he said Jesus was dead, but he wasn't. Wow! No, that's that's what they were saying. That, that is not logical. Yeah, no, but that's that's what happened. So I explained to them. Oh, yeah, the soldier. Yes. The soldier was fighting. He was fighting someone, and you, uh, you think you killed them, and then you turn your back. If you made a mistake, what would happen to you? You would be killed. Yeah, so a soldier is not going to make a mistake. Uh, and then the, the second thing mm. is that that Roman soldier mm. was under the authority of the centurion. Yeah. Now, if he didn't do his job, what's going to happen to the soldier? he will be killed. Yeah, yeah. Right? Mm. Okay, what's your question? Who's Satan Synagogue? Sorry? Satan Synagogue. Who, who would you say is Satan Synagogue? Is that Samaritans. Samaritans. It says that they claim they are Yes, Samaritans. Samaritans. Yes. In the first century, that's the, you know who the Samaritans were? Okay. Do you know who they were? Oh, no, a little bit. No, okay, no. they were identified to Jewish people, but they were not Jews. They were a mixture of Jews and certain other people like Moabites who live in what we now call Jordan. Now, they borrowed a lot of teachings from the Tanakh, the Old Testament, okay? And the Lord Jesus met some of the Samaritans. The number one is in John 4, the Samaritan woman. Now, the Samaritans, they mixed religions. They were very good at mixing them up, like King Charles likes to think, okay? They weren't going to be the king next week. Now, in the first century, some of these Samaritans became the, the pioneers of what we now call the Gnostic teaching, Gnosticism. And one of them is mentioned in the book of uh, Acts. His name is Simon Magus. When Simon Magus leaves the pages of the New Testament, he's found in Rome, Italy, teaching a mixture of religion. There's a, so they designed a synagogue. Okay, but in a, in a modern day uh, uh, scenario, yes. <laughs> <laughs>